Hi everybody, my name is Kelsey. I'm at Holy Cross Diabetes Self-Management Program here in Taos, New Mexico. And today I'm gonna do a little tutorial about how to use our sample glucometers. Um, so we get these, the Contour Next model, we get these as free samples from the company that makes them and that allows us to give them out to people who aren't able to um, get a glucometer through their insurance, maybe it's a new diagnosis of diabetes or it's a crisis, they've just been to the hospital or they've lost their old machine, what have you. We've got them to give out. Um, as we are all living in this post-COVID-19 world and we're kind of 100% virtual in terms of our patient health visits and our education right now, we were looking for a way to help everybody figure out how to use these if they're new to them without that in-person education that we would normally give. So that's what this video is all about today. So if you are given one of these by your diabetes educator, it's usually gonna come like this. The box is already open, as you can see. And what you're gonna do is you'll open that up and inside the most important thing you're gonna pull out is this little black pouch. So your diabetes educator will have kind of filled this up with everything you need before you pick it up and it's going to look like this inside mine is a little depleted on supplies because this is the one i just use on my own in the office but all the basics are there so let's walk through each thing so you've got the actual machine itself and again all the settings and everything the time the date your target um your blood glucose target goals should already be entered in there by the educator before you get it. So that's all set, that's the glucometer. These in this little container here, these are the strips. You can see the strips kind of down in there. And normally when you get one from our diabetes management clinic, you'll, you'll have 40 strips to start out with. Uh, and that's what makes these little sample glucometers we give out different from a glucometer you would get from your insurance. Um, with your insurance, you get new strips and supplies and everything every month. When we give you one of these, it's really just supposed to be temporary. So you've got those 40 strips and once they're used up, we're really wanting to be on some other kind of machine that is more sustainable, whether it's through your insurance or what have you. But those are your strips. You've got these colorful little guys. I just have one left, but you will normally have 10 of these little things. They're different colors. Um, I think they're blue, green, yellow, all those different guys. And you can see they've got this kind of, almost looks like a little stick person with a little round head and this end is more blunt. That's the lancet, which means needle. This is the needles in here. You can't see the needle because it's all covered up and safe, but that's this contains the needle that we will use to check our blood sugar. So lancet, and here is the lancing device. Kind of looks like a pen. So we're gonna kind of start here with how to use this whole kit. Uh, there might also be, and I may have it here in my box, yeah. You might also get some of this. It looks like a little eyedropper almost. Don't put it in your eyes. It's called a control solution, and it can be used to check the accuracy of the readings you're getting on your meter. You won't use it on a daily basis. It's good to keep around in case we're ever getting really wacky readings from your meter. Uh, we can use this to kind of see how accurate the machine is, but on a day-to-day -day basis, you're not going to need it. So, control solution. Let's flash back to this guy, the lancing device, because this is kind of where we're going to start. And I find that um, generally glucometers are, are pretty similar across the board. When you get good at using one, like this one, you're going to be able to figure out pretty much all other models, but the real part of this particular model that's kind of tricky is this little device called the lancing device. So where you're going to start is just kind of look at it. We've got these different parts. There's this kind of black tip that has numbers on it and you can change these numbers by twisting it and it lines up with this little needle. There are these two little notches. Make sure you can see that. There are these two little notches right here between the white collar and the rest of the, the black body of the pen. There's this button, it's not, it's depressed right now, so it's not up. This little guy on the end is actually a plunger. And you could see right there, when I pulled that plunger, this button came up and I could depress it now. 
So when you pull that plunger, the button pops up and you can press it. We'll talk about what that's for in a minute. But first, what you're gonna do is hold with one hand, you're gonna hold this black part of the body of the lancing device. From there, you take your other hand and use your two fingers to pinch on this white collar because that white collar will twist. You'll see the notches don't line up anymore and you can pop that off. So do that a couple times. That You can hear it click and lock in place when these notches are lined up. When you twist it and pull it off, so you twist it, unlock and pull it off, it kind of pulls this cap off and you see this kind of inner part of it. So that's the first step to putting your needle in there. Starts out like this, it's locked up, twist to unlock, pull it off, and you've got this inner part exposed. So let's go ahead and put a, a, a lancet, a needle in here. So that's ready to go. I'm gonna get my little lancet out. And like we said, the lancets are these colorful little pieces. My last one that I've got is this red one. So hold this little thing like so, the circular part is up here because that part is where the needle is. And when you're inserting it into this thing, you can hold on to that part. And you'll see that this end is kind of square. So that square part is actually what you push into this portion of the lancing device. There's this little kind of cavity. The square part will go in there and you just push it down in there as far as it'll go. There's no twisting or screwing it in or anything like that. You'll just push it till it goes all the way down in there. So I can't push it any further than that. Now, carefully, carefully, you're gonna twist this little circular part right off and then it just pops off like that. You can see that teeny tiny needle. It's really, really little. Wish I could get it to focus a little bit better for you. But that might be about it. So there's that teeny needle right there. Then you take that cap of the lancing device we had, you're gonna take it and put it right back on like that, just slip it right over and then make sure you lock it in place. See how those two little notches are lined up? Just like that, okay. Now from there, you've got your needle in there, you're pretty much ready to go, but practice this little mechanism a few times. Keep your hands, your fingers clear of this part. No fingers here for right now, because all you're gonna do is practice pulling to load that little needle and pressing the button to release it. And you might even notice, even if you're watching up here, when you press that button down, you don't even really see the needle because it's so small, it goes so shallow. But when you're checking your blood sugar, that's where the needle's gonna come out. So practice prepping the needle and pressing the button a few times to release it, just so you get comfortable with it. Now up here, these numbers you saw earlier, this changes the depth of the needle. So the, the higher the number, the max here is five, the higher the number, the deeper the needle is gonna go. And then the smaller the number, one in this case is the lowest, the shallower it'll go. Just to start out, most of us do fine with a three. Start out right in the middle and see how you do. Um, and then we'll kind of adjust from there. But for now, this thing is set and ready to go. So we can just kind of set it right here. One other thing to note, I should have mentioned it a little earlier, but this little circular part that you, you pulled off the top of the needle, go ahead and hold on to that. Because once you've used that needle four times, you're gonna change it out for another one. And when you take that old needle out and go to throw it away, you can just press the needle right back into this little rubber guy to cap it so you don't have a loose needle floating around in the trash. Um, preferably when you throw your old needles away, even if they do have a little cap on them, you've got a designated container where you throw your old sharps away. And you can get little sharps containers from us for free, or you can make them. I know people make them out of old plastic laundry detergent containers where you just, you can unscrew the cap, throw the sharp in there and close it back up. And on your sharps container, write sharps do not recycle so that when you throw it away, you don't have a, um, a good Samaritan guy who's taking your trash out and thinks, oh, I should recycle this. We don't want to recycle it. It's full of um, basically medical waste, so it needs to go in the trash. So make sure it's labeled as such. Anyway, this guy's all ready. Now we're going to take a look at this machine. So when you're ready to test your blood sugar, there's, no, there's not an on button. 
there's no on button. The way that you'll turn it on and get it ready to accept your blood sample is that you're gonna put one of these strips in. So before you touch any of your equipment, it's always good to wash your hands with soap and water before you touch anything. Because if you've got any sugar on your fingers, whether it's from maybe you peeled an orange in the last hour and you've got some sugar left over, sometimes lotions will have little particles in them that act like sugar. If you've got any of that sugar left on your fingers, you might end up getting the sugar on your equipment. Um, especially bad would be getting the sugar on your strips because then that sugar can end up in your blood sample and it's gonna make your sugar look higher than it is. So I've washed my hands, soap and water, there's no sugar here. So I'm gonna get one of these little strips out and you'll see that they kind of have two ends. There's this end that's kind of square, it's gray. And then there's this end, which is a little more rounded, and it has this little stripe on it. So you're going to put, when you're ready to check your blood sugar, you will take the square end, and that's what gets inserted into this machine. So it goes in like this. And it's going to say, give me blood. It'll say apply blood once it's all booted up. So that means you're ready to collect your little blood sample and put it on here. So here's how we're going to do that. You'll pick which finger you're going to test, and avoid poking yourself on the tips and the pads of your fingers. Don't poke there because there's a lot of nerves on those tips of your fingers and the pads and all those nerves are gonna make it more, not painful, but you'll feel it more for sure. So plan to poke yourself here on the inner or the outer side of your finger where there aren't as many nerves as you won't feel it as much. So when you're just starting out, double check that you've got your your little plunger pull, see how that button is raised and it's ready to be pushed. It's set on a three. And when you're just starting out, it's a good idea to kind of stabilize your finger on something like a, a table or even your leg if you're on the go. I'm gonna do it on the table and I'm gonna test my ring finger. So you'll hold it kind of like this where you've got your thumb free to press the button. Press it on that side of your finger and press harder than you think you need to. Another thing that can help is after you've pressed this button to release the needle, haven't done it yet, but when I do, I'm going to hold this here for like a whole second longer than I think I need to because our instinct is to, to pull away, right? When we know there's a needle coming, we're going to try and pull away, but if I make the conscious choice, I'm going to hold it there for a little longer, it's going to ensure that the needle penetrates and you get a good sample so you don't have to poke yourself numerous times. Okay. So I'm pressing here, I'm pressing harder than I think I need to. It's right on the side of my finger, as you can see. And I'm gonna go three, two, one, just like that. And then I didn't get a sample right away. It's not very big, but it's there. So what I'm gonna do is squeeze and release, just lightly. Don't squeeze too hard. We don't wanna break those blood vessels up, but just squeeze and release real light. And see, that's a good sample right there. That's perfect. If I didn't get blood by just squeezing like that, my next step would be to hold my hand way down here below my heart and squeeze on and off because that's going to help the blood flow down my arm and into my finger. But so that's a plenty good sample right there. So as you can see, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to scoop the blood up so much as I'm just going to touch the tip of this strip to that blood sample. And see, it just kind of vacuums up into the strip like that. And it's asking me, it says, what kind of test is this? Have I eaten? Am I fasting? And I have eaten today, so I'm going to put after meal. It's been about two hours since I ate, so I'm going to do after meal. And then I hit OK, and it's an 80. And that's, that's pretty low, even for after a meal. It's kind of low for me. Probably could have eaten a little bit more at my last meal. But um, that reading that you get is going to be, it'll change throughout the day. Like your educator will tell you, uh, it might be, you might be testing right when you first wake up before you've had anything woken up and before you've had anything to eat. You might be testing after your meals. It depends, but the goals for the readings that you get change depending on when you're testing. And that's something that your educator will talk to you plenty about during your next visit. Um, so like I said, I just use this needle in here one time. So I'm gonna be able to use this needle for three other tests before I throw it away. 
Um, sometimes it's helpful to write that down. If you keep a little, even a post-it post note in your kit, you can write down little tallies or however many times you've used the needle. And it's not like the needle will stop working after four, but it becomes more dull every time you use it and that can make it more painful and it can make it harder to get a good sample. So good to change it at least every four when you're getting regular san or when you're getting regular supplies, like if it's a, a meter you pick up from your pharmacy, you can change it every single time. For these little sample kits though, you get 10 lancets and you'll use them about four times each. Um, some other troubleshooting things and things to just keep in mind. Like we said, it's best to wash your, your hands with, hand, with soap and water before you touch any of this. Don't wanna get any sugar in there. Don't wanna contaminate your little blood sample. But if you're in a pinch or you're out and you're on the go, you might have some of these little alcohol pads with you. Um, you can use that to clean your finger before you test. I'm using it right now just to clean my finger off after I took the sample. But if you're gonna use these to clean your finger before you test it, you've got to, got to, got to wait for that alcohol to dry. So you're gonna, you just have to wipe it and count, don't blow on it, because then you're, you might end up, who knows what you're gonna accidentally spit on it, but you're gonna wipe it and just wait. Just give it 10 seconds or so. You can even shake it off. You wanna make sure it's totally dry because you don't want that alcohol getting in your sample. It can sometimes make your, your reading look higher than it actually is. Um, so make sure it dries so it's not gonna get in the sample. The other thing to think about, um, the thing that makes these not ideal is that alcohol is going to dry your skin out and it can make that needle stab a little more damaging to your skin than it needs to be. Um, so we're always going to, I'm always going to advocate for soap and water before you check your blood sugar. These will do in a pinch though. Um, a couple other troubleshooting things. If you poke yourself and, and you're not getting enough blood, you do the squeezing, the blood's not showing up, you hold it down here, still no blood, that might indicate that you your skin is just a little tougher. Maybe you work with your hands, they might be dry, and you might need to set your lancing device on a slightly higher number. So if I checked and I just couldn't get some blood from that, that poke, I would try to try and poke a different finger, but set it a little higher this time on four. And again, be sure you're pressing harder on your finger than you think you need to and try your best to hold it there for a whole second after you hit the button. You saw even in my demonstration, I, I was consciously trying to hold it there for a whole second and I pulled away still. Um, so it becomes something, you get better at it with practice, you'll learn which setting is best for you. Um, what's tricky about right now is that we're, it's hard for us to do in-person visits and walk-ins, but you can always call us and we have systems right now where you can do a video call and we can walk you through the process and talk you through troubleshooting if you're having difficulties. But a lot of what I just said today is gonna give you the basics anyway. So it'll be a really good place to start out. Um, other than that, remember we're here for anything else that might come up, any questions you've got about how to manage your, your health in general, but especially your blood sugar and um, we look forward to seeing you soon. So everybody take care and have a great day.